Okay. Hello, everyone. Well, thanks for joining me. Welcome to our third virtual workshop. This evening, I'm going to be walking you through OCT and geography using Spectralis. So like our other webinars and our previous two virtual workshops, I'm joined this evening by Nathan O'Dell. He's the sales manager. If you wave your left hand, Nathan. He's a sales manager for the uh, the, the southeast and, and up to the Midlands of the UK. And on my right hand side with me this evening and um, producing the show is Emily Malbum. She's head of the UK Academy team and the marketing team as well. So let me just explain how the 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 running order of things if, this evening. We're going to start by doing um, a simple acquisition using OCT and geography um, on Nathan's eye. And what I really want to do with this um, next hopefully about an hour I've got with you guys is really just show you what um, OCT angiography is like take using this device but also box fresh what it's like fresh out the box um, and how to set this up properly so if you already have a spectralis and you've just invested in OCT angiography this is going to be a handy tool for you to get to grips with it or if you've already been using OCTA for a while I'm going to share with you all some hot tips and pointers uh, of really what we recommend the best thing to do with using this technology. So before we go in and get Nathan set up, for those of you that don't know by now, you may have heard of OCT angiography. It's still classified as a new technology, but really in many ways, it's been around for a good five or six years now. Um, where is it mainly used? Well, from, from our point of view, um, it's mainly used in hospitals, pretty much exclusively in hospitals with the Spectralis. Um, and at this point in time, I still think OCT and geography um, is still a, a work in progress. So there's still lots of ophthalmologists out there getting to grips with this technology and understanding how it fits in with all the other imaging modalities. We're always very careful when we're talking about OCT angiography to make sure that we never um, infer that this will replace traditional angiography because in many ways the two complement each other hand in hand but the huge benefit of OCT angiography is of course it's non-invasive just like OCT so we don't have to inject a patient with dye any type of dye like we would for an ICG or a fluorescein angiogram and you can do it through an undilated pupil most of the time as well um, so just like having an OCT, it's a, it's a very quick and easy way to understand what's flowing in a patient's retina. Now, as we go through the, the captures, I'm going to explain the limitations of OCT angiography in a bit more detail. And I think it's easier to show you that with the screen. So I'm going to switch over now. We're going to get Nathan up on the chin rest. Now, how's that high rise for you? Mate? Is that OK, great. OK, so what we're going to do. It's first of all, we're just going to fire up the software and we'll go straight into OCT and geography capture mode. Now, where it exists, um, hopefully you already joined us for the previous retinal session and you're familiar with seeing this screen. But if, if you've seen this for the first time, this is our main capture screen on the Spectralis. And what this big black box will be, of course, eventually is, um, is the capture window if we were just doing infrared imaging. But for OCT angiography, what we're going to do is rather than doing an infrared image to begin with, because really that was the process I went through in the uh, medical retina session previously, we're going to dive straight in to try and um, make best use of the time today. So way to dive straight in is we go straight to where it says OCT, A, um, OCT off. And as you can see there, it says OCTA. Now, what it will default to um, is the high resolution 10 degrees OCTA pattern. Now, as I say, fresh out the box, this is what it looks like. You have two default patterns with our system. This is the high resolution 10, as I just mentioned. And then next to that is the high speed 20 OCTA pattern. Now, on this same panel, we also have some custom buttons. I'm going to come to that in a while um, and I'll, um, I'll walk you through how to set up our recommended buttons on there. But just to begin with, I really just want to show you what acquisition is like with the preset buttons that we already have. So, we've, as I say, high res 10, high speed 20. 
Now, coming down a little bit, this has got a little bit more information about the scan pattern, as, of course, the Spectralis does on every acquisition. And here we can see there's an ART of five frames. Now, what that means in OCT and geography is that's actually five passes the OCT line is making to gather the flow information of the retina. And as you can see, I can actually adjust that. We can push that all the way up to seven or even drop it down to four. But the default is five. A lot of other OCTA systems out there, the passes, they, the maximum they can achieve is actually around about four. So being able to push it up to seven is actually a very unique thing to this platform. And I'll explain a little bit later um, why we would do that. Um, again, if you have any questions while we're going through this, please um, ask away on the GoToWebinar platform. There should be a little question mark button uh, you have up there. So keep flinging them to me. And as we go through this live acquisition, I'll try and answer them as we go along. Um, and at, at the end, Emily's going to save a few up to ask at the end. But without further ado, let's dive in and we'll do a scan now of Nathan's right eye with the high res 10 degrees box. OK, so. Just like we would do with um, a normal scan, we line up Nathan's eye. However, we're doing OCT angiography now, aren't we? So this is really where we need to be a lot more careful with how we acquire our OCT. And what I mean by that is before we even go in, we need to, to consider some things. How dry are Nathan's eyes? Because if he has a very poor tear film, what it means is the signal to the OCT will be affected by the tear film. So a good practice with OCT angiography, if you can, is add some lubrication drops, some hypermellose drops to the patient's eye prior to acquisition. However, I understand the real world, it's not always possible to do that. Um, and what we can of course do with this platform is just ask the patient to blink, thereby replacing and replenishing their own tear film as we go along. So let's pretend I've already assumed that Nathan's got a good tear film um, and we're going to go straight in. So as I've done before, and as we always do with any acquisition, is we push into the eye, really focusing our attention on this infrared capture window. That's all I'm worried about right now. And I'm going to fill the screen with that white blast. Now, because um, we're slightly overexposed, I'm now going to use the touchscreen panel to just lower that exposure a little bit. And here we have Nathan's macula, his fovea centered right there in the middle of the scan. But I'm still not at the correct depth because I haven't got an OCT. So keep pushing forward until lo and behold, Nathan's macula pops up in the window. OK, so I'm just going to lower the exposure a little bit. because I'm getting a couple of pixels just flash up around there. Now, again, before we take an OCTA, what's extremely important when we're doing this is we're thinking about what we're focusing on with this technology. We're not just dealing with the cross section of the retina anymore, are we? We're actually now interested in the flow signal of erythrocytes moving through Nathan's very tightly compact blood vessel system in his, uh, in his retina. And because of that, we focus is actually more important than any other time before. So what I would say is when you're doing OCT angiography, it's always have a little swing backwards and forwards with that focus, keeping the brightness up as much as you can, just so you can identify the sharpness on these perifoveal vessels, because ultimately that will improve the quality of the OCTA. And that's what I'm doing as I capture with this machine, always thinking about that end product, the quality of the last image. So taking your time and lining things up will pay us um, reward us when we look at the images. So I'll stop talking now and we're going to lock in like we would with our ART and we'll go to acquire. Now, what you need to be aware of is because we're doing a high resolution scan, this is a, sl a slower OCT than what we're normally used to when we're doing normal OCT. Now, what's actually happening here is on each one of those lines, it's sweeping five times. But not only that, it's picking up a lot more data than we normally do with regular OCT. That's why these images take longer. But what's important to remember is that we're talking to the patient all the way through, coaching them. Nathan, you're doing really well. Um, we're nearly there, telling the patient how long they've got left. If they've had OCTs before, they might be thinking, well, this is taking a long time. 
if you're telling them what's going on, they understand where we are. So Nathan, you only got a little bit left, and now we can just about finish the scan. Just the last few beeps. And again, what I'm doing is, as we normally do, just guiding the OCT through the acquisition. So Nathan, I just want you to stay there for a minute because this is a relatively new thing that's come with our software now. And this is my quick um, heads up of what the final image would look like. And as we can see, I've got a wonderfully clear image, even though Nathan was blinking throughout. That was great. He was replenishing his tear film all the way through. But you can see that that's not impacted the quality of the OCTA at all. So I'm happy with this preview. I'm going to keep it. OK, so that was a high resolution, 10 degrees preset button. Now let's switch to the high speed 20. Now you're going to notice the scan will be much quicker. But again, I'm going to give you some tips when we're acquiring these images of things to look out for. Now, people often say to me, Tim, why would I do high res 10 on a patient and not just a high speed 20 on everyone? Well, it all depends on the pathology we're looking at. If you're looking at a very small lesion right on the fovea, as we are with a lot of AMD cases, then high res 10 gives you the best quality on a small area. What I generally say, high speed 20, is we're going over a larger area. So generally, these scan pans can be better for vascular diseases like branch vein occlusion or diabetic retinopathy. So what we're going to do now is going to lock in again on this high speed 20 and go to acquire. Now, because we're doing high speed, there's simply less data being collected along each line. So if you ever get this where it pauses for a minute, you just want to move the joystick slightly left and right. And again, tell your patient to have a blink. So Nathan, just keep staring, have a little blink there. And one of the really important things to look for when we're doing um, OCT angiography is look at this infrared window at the bottom. This green bar at the bottom really is the signal strength of the OCT. But what I like to recommend you use it for is a way to um, judge the quality of the patient's tear film. And as you go forward, you can see it starts to drop off and go yellow, sometimes even red. And you see when the patient blinks, it goes red and pauses for a moment. But once they blinked and refixated on the target, it should go green again and pop up to the top. So always sort of wiggle around left and right and keep an eye on that color bar because that's telling me the quality of the signal. So again, Nathan, you're doing really well. You've only got about one third left to go. Just keep staring at the middle of the target. Have a little blink because we've gone orange. There we go, goes green again. Fantastic, nearly there. And just the last little bits now. Thanks very much, Dave. Excellent, okay, so just sit back and relax for a moment. So, as you can see, we've now got this high speed 20, which on the overview here, looks a little less dense in blood vessels than the previous one. Now that's simply because we're scanning over a wider area with a slightly, um, lower quality. That's why it's high speed. So like I say, this would be very good for looking for large areas of ischemia, whereas the other high um, high resolution pattern would be good for um, AMD cases. But I'm happy with this one. I'm going to keep it. Now, they're the two presets. And um, what we can do as well is we can play around with these buttons to make some extra scan patterns, okay? So I'm going to do that while we're here. I'm gonna drop this down to 15 by 15 degrees, and I'm gonna leave this on high speed at the bottom. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is this is a nice middle road scan to do. So it's smaller than the 20 degrees area. So the same amount of scans will be more compacted in a 15 degree space, but it will be faster than our high resolution 10. And I'm gonna save this as a high speed 15 button. So just holding down for three seconds on the custom tab, high speed 15, okay. Now forevermore on this system, it will exist, high speed 15, no matter which patient we're looking at, and that will always be there. But now let's see how wide we can go with the OCTA scan pattern. Now, leaving it on high speed, we can actually push it all the way out to 30 degrees, okay? So this is as wide as we can go at the moment with the OCT angiography using a 30 degree lens. We go all the way out um, 
30 degrees horizontal, but 15 degrees high. Now, if you try and go beyond that, you will get a red box. Now, what that means, whenever you see the red box when you're adjusting the patterns, is you're going beyond um, the kind of recommended file sizes for OCT angiograms. And the software has been specifically designed that way, actually, because a big another big consideration with OCT angiography is the actual file sizes are much larger than your regular um, OCT scans. And what we generally say a rule of thumb is a high resolution scan pattern is around about 230 megabytes. So yeah, that's a fairly significant file size when you compare it to uh, other normal OCTs. So that's why we have this limitation on size. So I've made this wide field one. I'm going to call this a high speed 30 now. So I'm just going to, again, hold down the button, high speed 30. So now on my presets, again, this is our recommendation at the moment. Whack in your middle of the road, faster scan, a high speed 15 and a high speed 30. But let's come to the other end of the scale now and do the best we possibly can with this device. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose the high resolution pattern just to set the defaults back to high res there quickly. And I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit, but we're going to leave this on high resolution. So now we've got a very, very tight, compacted OCTA pattern. But not only that, I'm going to push this right up to ART seven frames. Now, again, this is a fairly recent thing we've been recommending OCTA customers because it's a nice way to put um, really like a super high res pattern on there. So what I'm going to call this um, is we'll call this a high res five. OK. And we'll just call that super high res. OK. Now, again, I've written that into the description just as a reminder, if anyone else would come along and use this system. Any descriptions you make at the uh, uh, in the preset of the button there, if I hover my mouse around, you can see it pops up super high res, okay? So we'll come back to those patterns in a minute. What we're going to do first is we're just gonna close this window and we're gonna save Nathan's images and we're gonna look at this scan of Nathan's right eye because some of the more eagle-eyed people in the audience may have noticed Nathan has a, a unique part to his right eye, okay? So before we open up an OCTA, what I want to do is review this um, with, um, just screen share there, um, yeah, sorry. I'm going to review this with some different modalities. And now, if you were, if you joined us on the previous retina session, these are actually the same scans we took in that um, acquisition series. And what we'll do is we'll investigate this uh, un unusual area Nathan has on his right retina. So if we open up the multicolor to begin with, we're going to see now exactly where Nathan had a little bit of irregularity. Now, it almost looks like a kind of dot hemorrhage right there on the temporal side of Nathan's uh, fovea. And Nathan described this in the past as a very small maybe a, a, a little bleed he had once and they, it then went away over time and it's left him with this little sort of um, loss of reflectivity and maybe a little kind of vascular, vascular loop maybe. But again, we don't know yet until we open up the OCTA. So he's got those two little dots showing up on the multicolor. Again, on normal OCT, we could open this up. Again, let's enlarge the OCT in the window and just see if we just roll up and down around where that little spot is. So if we identify it, here we can see if I move my, let me make that infrared a bit bigger. If I move my crosshairs and put it right over that little spot of loss of reflectivity, look at the OCT. What we've got here is hyperreflection across the inner limited membrane, but crucially, I think it's down here. So what we've got is a little bit of, um, a bunched together blood vessel there, perhaps in the intermediate capillary plexus. But again, we don't know that until we've investigated the OCTA. So let's open up that now. Now, what we've got is the um, images saved. And if we open up this um, first image, 
So this is the high speed 20 degrees OCTA. And what we do when we open these up is we get this kind of quick overview of three different views of Nathan's vascular complex. And if I zoom in on the B scan here, that helps you understand what these three windows are showing us. And you can actually see on the B scan, it's got a little graph at the side of exactly where each window is. And as you can see, my mouse is synchronized to each window. So the superficial vascular complex, SVC, is this bottom window on the left. And there actually, you can just about see Nathan's little funny blood vessel perhaps. Next to that in the middle, we have the deep vascular complex. So that's this middle um, window here. And then of course, the avascular complex, which is just at the bottom of the uh, outer plexiform down to Brooks membrane. Now, of course, Nathan doesn't have any neovascularization, so this window should always be black if that's the case. And you'll notice as well, in each one of these windows, PAR is turned on, and that stands, of course, for the projection artifact removal. So it's automatically turned on. So this is our quick view window. We've also got this option as a quick view window where I can just expand um, just the B scan itself and look at the flow signal. Now this, again, can be very important because everyone is used to looking at OCTs from a cross-sectional point of view. And when it comes to OCTA, we're of course looking on fast onto the retina. But if, you're, if you want to be sort of in familiar ground and seeing where flow signal is coming from, staying on the B scan can be very helpful. And what we can actually do with this window and the other one is move our flow signal scale left and right. And what that actually does is that allows us to isolate where we have flow and where we have structure. So again, that can be really helpful if you're looking at pathology and trying to understand where you may have flow that isn't um, light cascading down from above, which is what can happen with a projection artifact, okay? So two quick ways of re reviewing this high-speed image. But I'm gonna come out for a minute because I wanna open up this other scan we did because this of course was the high resolution scan. Now straight away, you, you may notice that the vessel network with high resolution is much more detailed here. And where I was just pointing to Nathan's odd looking blood vessels, I can actually hold down my left mouse button and draw around those and start to understand maybe where we can see Nathan's blood vessels. And actually you can just about pick that up again Let's isolate the structure from the flow for a moment and draw around the on fast view of the uh, of the OCTA. And there you can actually see it's actually within the superficial vascular complex there, isn't it? But let's now move a bit deeper down in this funny bit of uh, Nathan's retina to investigate the depth. And that's why we use the OCT angiography tab. So I'm going to click on that now. And what this will basically do is give us full manual segmentation controls of Nathan's blood vessel networks in his retina. Now, the way the software is designed, it's actually very intuitive because on this panel on the left hand side, you can see that the way all these buttons fit together is almost like Lego. They're pieced together the same way the blood vessel network is pieced together in the retina. So if I wanted to simulate what we would normally see with a fluorescein angiogram, I can click on RET. That is, of course, the retina. And that changes the segmentation from the inner limiting membrane down to Brooks membrane. Now, this would, if there was a pathology of uh, membrane or something there, you would see that glow on there. And I'm, hopefully, we'll have time to show you a couple of cases in a moment. But in Nathan's case, we're really focusing on the superficial vessels. So it's actually not done that much favors for us here. It's just letting us see the full depth of all these blood vessel complexes and plexi within this structure. And you can see that's the way the buttons are made up. So within the retina, I have the superficial vascular complex, the deep vascular complex. And you can see when I flick between the two, that changes the windows we can see. And within each of the complexes, Again, what's unique to our platform is we can isolate the plexus within each complex. So within your superficial vascular complex, you have your nerve fiber layer, vascular plexus, and the superficial 
vascular plexus as well. Again, it's because we're recording this data in such sharp, high detail, are we actually able to do this? And as we go into the DVC, we can see we've got the intermediate capillary plexus and the deep capillary plexus. Below that, but still within the retina, is of course the avascular complex, which as we've seen on the quick overview before, is of course empty for Nathan. But going deeper down into the retina now, clicking on the choriocapillary button, that of course shows you the fine network of Nathan's choriocapillaries. And what's really interesting about Nathan's interesting eye is where he has that um, little bit of high, well, bunched together blood vessels there from that old little um, uh, bleed perhaps it's actually looks like it's punched a hole in the choreo capillaries but of course it hasn't that's a projection artifact from above isn't it that's the light being blocked so the very tightly uh, densely and um, compacted choreo uh, capillary layer and again as we go deeper down into the choroid again because of that very dense choreo capillary layer we don't see all the choroid and this is an interesting area of OCT angiography at this point in time, because I, a lot of ophthalmologists ask me this. They say, Tim, why can't I just move the segmentation down and see the full choroid with OCT angiography? And the way I like to explain it is you need to think of the vessel network in the deep parts of the retina almost like a jungle, almost like a rainforest. And the very dense foliage of the top part of the, the jungle canopy is the choreo capillaries. And if you want to see the roots of those trees, you just simply won't see them through this dense leaf canopy of the dense fo forest above it. And that's actually exactly what's happening with OCT and geography, is the dense network of the choreo capillaries is absorbing all the signal of OCT. And again, if I bring the flow back, you can understand why it's this very dense layer of choreo capillaries isn't allowing us to see the flow in those larger vessels of the choroid. So there we have these buttons down on the side. Now, fresh out the box again, what you will have is um, a blank buttons below that. Now, one of our recommendations is that you uh, set up a slab tool and we have a PDF for this, which I'll share with you in a moment. But just really quickly, I'll show you how to do that. So once again, I've gone back to the default of the superficial vascular complex. And I'm gonna go down this advanced panel down here. Hopefully you can all see that. And I'll choose the reference from the inner limiting membrane to Brooks membrane. Now, when I do that, it actually jumps to this single line. Now for a moment, let's just switch our attention to these four windows because these are important. The one in the top left, it says it on the in the top left corner, that's the transverse structural OCT. So that's actually the structure of Nathan's retina with OCT light. So if we were to look down on Nathan's retina, you can see this very shiny surface of where his vitreous is actually pressed flat against the inner limiting membrane there. But the OCTA window, the flow window in the top right is empty. And it will be until I change the segmentation so these bottom two windows, the one on the right is the horizontal line. And if I move that, you'll see that. OK. And the one on the bottom left is the vertical line. So there's our crosshairs of horizontal and vertical B scans and how they correlate to the image. So let's introduce some blood vessels now. Let's make this a little bit thicker. And lo and behold, because I've made this slab thicker, we lose a bit of reflectivity on the structure image there. Again, just because I move the thickness into the vitreous, but I'm going to drag it down a little bit more. And we, now we can see all the flow within Nathan's superficial um, vascular complex. But what I want to do is save this as a default slab. And a, a good default to choose is around about 40 microns. So down on the advanced tab, I'm going to choose 40 down there. What that means is that sets this slab to 40 microns. And we'll just drag it right up to the top, which is 0%. So the relative position of this slab is at zero following the contour of the inner limiting membrane and at 100% when we're following the contour of Brooks membrane. OK, so that's our slab set up. But what's really important is I want to set the projection artifact removal as on. And I want to set the auto contrast because that will, of course, alter and change the contrast 
of my flow signal. So I'm now good to save this slab. So just like we did with the preset buttons, I'm going to hold down the button on this custom slab and I'm going to call this slab 40. Now it's up to you. You can make a slab 60, a slab, a slab 80, a slab 5. You can totally customize that as well as you want. But the customization of these slabs is very important because it actually utilizes um, a very uh, important part of our technology. And it's something called adaptive segmentation. And what that means is the segmentation, rather than just taking predetermined segmentation from the algorithm, it will actually bend from the profile of the inlimited membrane, because I set that as my reference, to the profile of Brooks membrane. Now, the best way to show you this is if I squash together these two OCT images a little bit, click on this one-to-one -one pixel, I'm going to make that image full screen of this uh, OCT. This is the vertical meridian I'm looking at here. Um, and I'm going to grab this slab and drag it down to emphasize what I mean by adaptive segmentation. So here we are following the ILM. When I bend that down now to Brooks, look what happens. It goes flat. Now, the reason why this is important to know and important for anyone using our platform for OCT and geography is Nathan has no pathology. But when you do have pathology, you do, of course, have displacement of these vessel networks, which can cause artifacts when we're reviewing them. So if you use a slab that's taking the contour of the inner limited membrane to the contour of Brooks, you can actually overcome segmentation issues because it will actually just follow that slab regardless of the automated segmentation done by the algorithm. But let's try and narrow down a little bit where Nathan's interest in blood vessel is. So as I've dragged down, 18% into the retina. Again, I'm going to correlate by just dragging my left mouse over those interesting vessels. And once again, just drawing around that, holding down my left mouse button, I can actually see the flow coming from this interesting little vascular loop that Nathan was left with. Again, we can't see any fluid or structural changes within the retina. So so that's confirmed that this isn't an active thing going on. It's just an unusual little vessel network. But thanks to OCTA, we've got this incredible detail and depth of exactly where this is in Nathan's retina. OK, so let's say, for example, I now have identified this with the software and I wanted to come back to it at some point in the future. Well, from here, I can save it. So where it says save views, I can hold down my left mouse button just for three seconds. And again, I'll call that, uh, I don't know, vessel, okay? And forevermore, when I come out and back into this software again, let's move it around. If I click vessel, it'll snap back to exactly where I was when I initially identified that. So that's a really good thing for doing um, follow up scans or to um, identify a same area to a colleague or something like that. But now let's look at um, quantification, because one of the things we can, of course, do is draw around things. And again, this is something that's unique to our platform. Is you can actually draw around it and save that on the image. So let's choose Nathan's um, Foveal avascular zone, and generally a good place to find that is actually by clicking on the intermediate capillary plexus. We're going to enlarge this window here. So now we can see Nathan's um, foveal avascular zone. So you can see that in the middle. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose this little draw tool, and I'm going to draw around that region. OK, I'll try and do it as quick as I can. There we go. OK, so that's one thing we've drawn around. And again, that is a, a way to quantify and measure an area. But let's come back up to that superficial layer where Nathan had that interesting blood vessel. Now watch happens. I'm just going to lower the contrast a little bit there so I can explain to you what I'm doing. I'm going to draw around Nathan's interesting vessel. But watch what happens. The colour changes. So now I've got a nice way of drawing around things and identifying them, and the software will automatically change colour um, with every time I, I pick that tool to measure things. And what's great is if I again zoom back into this image, and we'll stay on the uh, Nathan's foveal avascular zone, 
Let's isolate it with the intermediate capillary plexus. What's really interesting is with that segmentation I've drawn, let's take away the structure for a moment. We actually get um, a, a horizontal, um, sorry, a, a cross-sectional view on this horizontal B scan of where that foveal avascular zone is. And if I roll up and down in my mouse, you can actually see on this cross section where I've identified Nathan's foveal avascular zone. And you can see there, okay? Again, if I just show you and draw around this image, you can see how that translates into this horizontal view. Again, a very unique thing to our platform that we can do that. So that's just using OCT angiography and reviewing the main tabs, which is the display, the large flow image, the three quick overviews, and of course the OCT and geography tab. Now, I want to talk about something that's incredibly important with OCT and geography because it's something I wish I could swing a magic wand to make it everyone do by default. And I, I hope anyone who watches this from now on does this. Every single time you do an OCTA, set the reference, okay? So just like you would always do with any normal OCT for glaucoma, for medical retina, Setting the reference is the only way you get this extremely high, um, repeatable way of, of um, comparing two images together. So I'm going to set a reference there for Nathan's two OCTs. But I'm also going to show you something else. Let's go back to the multicolor. OK, now, as we saw in Nathan's multicolor, I can open that up. The multicolor picked up where he has that what we now understand to be um, a kind of bunched together blood vessel following a little bleed there. What I can actually do, though, is if I have scan plan tool is I can actually plan to do an OCTA over this area. So if I wanted to do that, I could right click on the image, go to the scan planning tool. And what this gives us is almost like our capture window. I can choose OCT and geography and let's pick our. Um, high res 10 pattern that we were using the default one there and this time I'm just going to come out a little bit with the view so where it says 15 up there I'm just going to switch that to 30 degrees and I'm going to drag my OCTA over the top of this image now this doesn't have to be a multicolor image this can be a, um, a blue peak autofluorescence image this can be one frame from a fluorescein angiogram this can be one frame from an ICG you can plan where you want your OCTA, and that's really what makes this truly multimodal. So once I've chosen the area, I'm gonna isolate when I do the scan again, is I press save. And what that will do is that will then save onto the software my plan scan of the OCTA on that multicolor. And you can see it on the thumbnail there. And what's really important is what, and what I really like is it's actually already set this up as a reference with a follow-up. So it's gonna set that sequence in motion. However, I wanna show you something else that's new. It's with the latest version of software. I think it's the 6.15 version, um, or maybe 6.16.2. You can actually have a, an, an improvement to your scan plan on top of OCT and geography. And what I mean by that is if we do the same thing on Nathan's um, scan, of his right eye I've already did. So I'll just go to scan planning tool. Watch what happens now. I get an extra box. It says overlay, okay? Let's zoom back out to 30 degrees and we'll see what this button does. Now what it does is it defaults to the scanning laser ophthalmoscope image, SLO. But when I click on SVC, BVC, AC, look what we can now do. We can now not only scan where the area we want to be, but actually use the OCTA image from a depth pers perspective of what complex we are to isolate where we want the OCT angiography. So again, using the previous OCT angiography, I'm going to drag and drop that pattern over Nathan's interesting vessel, save that, and again, exit out of there. And what we'll have eventually on the software is a new scan plan on top of an OCTA. So what we're doing here is we're really just um, really expanding how we can use OCT and geography in a multimodal way. Now, while we're waiting for that, 
what we're going to do, I'm going to click on examination and we're going to go back into capture again, just to show you guys um, what happens when we do a follow up scan with OCT and geography. So back into acquisition. How are we doing for time, Emma? Are we okay? Good. Good. So straight back into OCT and geography. Now, because I've set those um, plan scans, follow up is now lit up. Okay, so let's click that button and see what I chose. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a multicolor with an OCTA. I think to be kind to Nathan, because he's donating his eye for us, well, we won't do multicolor and OCTA. I'm just going to choose the OCTA that we used on top of the, of the previous OCTA. So this is the scan plan using that, that method. So I'm going to highlight it in the window. We're on his right eye, so it lets me do that. Click OK. And straight away, you see the system is now set up to follow up an OCT angio angiogram, this time um, where exactly where I dragged it over Nathan's interesting blood vessel. So let's move in a little bit, lower down the signal on the infrared, and look at that straight away. You can see Nathan's interesting blood vessel. Now we all know what that looks like on the, uh, on the OCTA image again. So let's just go to a client. So this is real life now. This is how we use this system. And again, I'm talking to Nathan all the way through, saying you're doing really well, Nathan. You just have a blink when you feel like it. And I'm just going to review your tear film with my green bar at the bottom. You're doing really well. You're about one third of the way through. And again, the important part of talking to a patient while you're doing an OCCA like this is it's, it's more comfortable than just sitting in silence and waiting for those beeps to get to the end because like I said before the patient might not realize what's going on you've told them they're having an OCT angiogram they may be thinking what's an angiogram I know what an OCT is but what is this and again telling a patient while you're doing this well it's a non-invasive way of doing an angiogram of your retina so we're about halfway through Nathan you're doing really well and I've actually experimented with this trying to do OCTA with and without talking to the patient. And you actually find it does go quicker if you talk to the patient, because if you don't talk, they can lose their attention. They start, their fixation loses. You just get greater images with greater compliance. So can you see the tear film dropped away a bit? Went orange, have a blink for me, Nate, and the signal went down. Well, that's great, nearly there. And again, I can stop this at any point if I'm happy with what I've already got. But we'll just see it through to the end. Just these last couple of lines now, Nate. Fantastic. OK, see it back for me. And that was a high resolution follow up on top of Nathan's interesting blood vessel. So I'm going to keep that image and we're going to exit out of the live capture. OK, so I think we've got time for um, some pathology images. So I'm going to look through a couple of cases. Um, and we'll come back to Nathan in a moment, because one thing that's very important to remember about OCT angi angiography is, as I mentioned before, these file sizes are bigger. So it's not like regular OCT, where as soon as you captured nine times out of 10, after a few seconds, they've saved to the server or wherever your database is held. You can just open them up. So depending on where you work, what the network is like in your hospital, it can take a while for these to process. So that's something that, again, is worth noting and telling um, ophthalmologists when they're reviewing these images. But let's just whiz over now and we're going to look at some cases and some different pathologies. OK, so I'll just refresh that list. So um, let's look at a follow up case here before and after an anti-VEGF injection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an OCTA um, from a patient in a clinic. So this, this patient was imaged this year in February. And what actually happened is you can see exactly why this patient was treated. They had a fairly large neovascularized membrane. Now, as soon as we open up the image in the quick view or indeed the, uh, the large view here, we see exactly where that membrane is, okay? Now, for the sake of time, I won't go into all the ins and outs, but you get an idea of what we're actually seeing here. We can see where this membrane is growing, 
And again, if I just enlarge the uh, OCT scan there, you can see that flow signal that's giving us this pattern we can see in the avascular complex. Let's get rid of the structure. It's here. This is where we shouldn't have yellow in this, this region between the uh, outer plexiform layer and Brooks. That's this very large membrane that's growing down there. OK. But what the great thing is, is the technician who took this image set this as a reference. And after the patient had had an anti-VEGF injection, did it as a follow up. So let's open up the subsequent scan. So this is a month later now, almost to the day. And the patient has had an injection of anti-VEGF. And look what's happened. That membrane has shrank. OK. However, as I always see with ophthalmologists, if it's not been correctly done as a reference and a follow up, they're just trying to close their eyes and remember what the last scan was. But if you've done it properly as a reference and a follow up, they don't have to do that. You can now click this logo in the bottom left corner, like we do, like we would with normal retina scans, where we compare the previous and the up to date one. But this time, what's very important is we're actually using OCTA to compare. So as we already know, this patient's um, main pathology that we're interested in right now is in the um, avascular complex. So what I can do with OCTA is actually choose the three different vascular complexes there. We're just going to whiz down to the avascular complex and we can see straight away what's changed. OK. And again, just holding down the left mouse button to draw around. This is a good thing for ophthalmologists who are new to OCTA because they know what B scans are. They can identify and understand when you've got fluid in the retina, when you can see an um, elevation of different layers and membranes. But this just ties it all together there. OK, now the other cool thing we can do is we can flicker that membrane on and off to show the animation from the reference which is from February this year to the follow up, which is in March this year. So if I click this red button in the bottom left, look at that. We can now see um, a very clear example of what happens before and after an anti-VEGF injection. And what's really amazing about our platform is that, of course, there's been no movement here. This is in the exact same place. So we're not accidentally quantifying signal noise or anything else. This is the same technique that's locked in the same place. So we know the ophthalmologist will know when they review this exactly what's changed in this membrane. OK, so that's referencing and following follow up scans on, on some pathology there and just how important that is. But let's have a quick look at a larger membrane now. So this is a patient who has a very large uh, membrane. Let's just open up the OCTA quickly. We do have lots of other modalities here. Now here, of course, we've got this very pretty looking um, uh, membrane growing up there in the avascular complex. Now, again, this is a wonderful detailed image, even though it was taken with high speed. But also look, how, look what else was used when this image was taken. It actually had EDI mode enabled. Now, again, this is a, a, a kind of area where we're still investigating this. How much of a difference does EDI make to OCTA? We can actually see, we do have a greater concentration of uh, flow signal, albeit it's the light projection of the choriocapillary blasting through the choroidal vessels and the sclera down there. But maybe EDI can sometimes enhance your images when you're trying to review these deeper membranes that are maybe you, you're imaging through fluid or through an elevated um, retina. But let's simulate what we would have done if this patient had had a fluorescein angiogram before. So let's come down all the way down there to one of the frames of the fluorescein. So this is at one minute, two seconds after the fluorescein injection. Let's open that image up. And here, the classic lesion that we can see with this um, hyperfluorescence, the pooling of the dye in this classic black border, giving us the diagnosis of this and very clear type two neovascularization. You can see petaloid formations of that intraretinal fluid, which of course we get from the OCT already. But what's great is I can right click and scan plan on top of the frame of that fluorescein angiogram. So once again, it's all about multimodality with this technology. And again, not only does that help with the um, 
with the diagnosis, but actually from a training point of view, it really helps ophthalmologists in many ways almost teach themselves. Every ophthalmologist in the world knows exactly what ICG and uh, fluorescein images tell us about the retina. But if you can combine that with OCTA imaging, they can, they can teach themselves the limitations of where we can go with OCT angiography and how it, um, how it compares to traditional types of angi angiography as well. Right, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I hope you found that informative and useful. Um, like I really said, yeah, just to thank her for her time, thank Nathan and thank you guys for joining me this evening. So I hope to see you in the next webinar and, um, and yeah, thanks again. Have a good evening.